To catch you up on what happened over the weekend down in Georgia, Warnock seems to be in a position of strength. The record surge in early voting indicates he's likely built on his narrow lead from last month's election. But with GOP voters normally voting in bigger numbers on Election Day, Walker is still very much in contention. A win for Walker would be a big boon for GOP morale, including former President Donald Trump and his 2024 hopes. A sign that partisanship can push through even the most controversial candidate. And on that note, NBC's Vaughn Hilliard has a big exclusive today. He sat down with Cheryl Parsa, who was with Walker for five years. Here's what she says happened between the two of them back in 2005. And he had his hand on my throat and my chest. And then he leaned back to throw a punch. Neither Walker nor his campaign have responded to multiple requests for comment on these allegations, and it's unclear how much effect they'll have on this second round of voting, which again is tomorrow. So for the sake of Joe Manchin, let's get you up to speed. Joining me now from Atlanta are NBC's Vaughn Hilliard and MSNBC's Tremaine Lee. So Vaughn, you have this exclusive. Tell me a little bit more about what Walker's ex said. Right. I think let's start with how this came to be. The Daily Beast, Roger Sullenberger, uh, did the initial report in which he brought to light Cheryl Parsa's story here, in which chronicled her five-year romantic relationship with Herschel Walker, in which that episode, you just heard her account, it took place nine months into their relationship. She went on to tell me about why she stayed with him. She particularly talked about the dissociative identity disorder, with which Herschel Walker has acknowledged having. Right now, he says that he is no longer going through routine treatment and that he is okay. But when you hear her talk about the episodes that she endured and over the course of those five years, uh, it also is important to understand that Herschel Walker, dating back to Thursday when the Daily Beast first published its report, and then when I attempted to directly ask him myself at an event on Saturday in which he ignored me and the campaign chose not to respond in any meaningful way, uh, then yesterday we came back to them yet again asking if they had any comment on the allegations put forward by Cheryl Spar Parsa. We have heard nothing from them. I want to let you hear a little bit more from her. Take a listen. Who is the man you got to know over the next five years? Nothing like the man I met. Absolutely nothing. There were glimpses of him. And um, I thought I met Herschel, the real Herschel. I knew nothing about his dissociative identity disorder at that time. And I watched these women come forward with their painful stories of betrayal, of um, their own fear, um, him denying the children, saying he doesn't even know them. He told me many times when I was with him, I could sell dirt to Georgia in light of where we are now. There's a lot of relevance in that statement for me. Katie, Herschel Walker's ex-wife in 2008 alleged that Herschel Walker held a gun to her head and threatened to blow her brains out. He has never denied that situation, only says that he does not recall it. His own son, Christian Walker, two months ago, said that his father threatened to kill the family. And, of course, over the course of this year, you have heard these multiple women who have come forward to allege that he paid for their abortions. There were three children who the public is now aware of that he was previously not acknowledging. And this, from Cheryl Parsa, is not only on the record, but also on camera in which she alleges this is in it, among others, over the course of this five-year relationship she had with the Republican candidate for the U.S. Senate. Very Katie. serious allegations. Uh, Tremaine, as Vaughn said and as we said, the Walker team has so far not responded to this. We've reached out multiple times. Um, what, is, what is he doing today on the campaign trail? What's he doing? What's Warnock doing? 
Katie, both of these candidates uh, are, are pushing into their, their base core voters. Uh, Herschel Walker, even with those latest allegations kind of swirling around him, uh, took a last-minute bus, bus trip up to rural North Georgia to lean into his supporters there. While Raphael Warnock is, is pushing into those communities that helped him win that special election in 2021, working-class voters, young voters, and black voters. So he started off the day at a, at a UPS distribution center uh, where he talked about uh, workers' rights and workers' dignity, needing uh, the union to stand behind him. And then here we are at Georgia Tech University he just uh, left a rally here where he talked to young people about um, really leaning into their um, concern that progress isn't happening enough. Their impatience, he said. And he likened himself um, to them when, when he was young, uh, fighting for rights like the, the killing of Amadou Diallo in New York, likening that to the way so many young people stood up um, in the wake of George Floyd's death. And later today, uh, Raphael Warnock will be joined uh, by Killer Mike at a barbershop, getting a group of black men and barbers together uh, to speak to why it's so important uh, for them to stand up in this moment where there's a clear contradiction between uh, Raphael Warnock, who is a beacon and carrying the tradition and light of uh, Ebenezer Baptist Church and the legacy of Dr. King. And you have Herschel Walker, who was carried a football and as he would paint uh, the less uh, the, the candidate with less value or moral standing, reminding them that even though this is a historic race with two black men, that he needs them to make sure that he can push the community forward. And so again, in these final hours before they give their send-offs uh, and the countdown begins, they're really pushing into their base here.